Good evening. This is Agashwani Kohima. I'm Jonas Yandan with Evening News. And the headlines. Nagaland British Congress Committee de- decries high rate of dengue in Moon District. Meeting proposes initiation of pilot palliative care projects in Kohima and Dimapu in collaboration with Baliam, India. Divisional Forest Officer Mugukchung appeals people to protect migratory bird, a moor falcon. And Zeminu District Planning and Development Board recommends upgradation of PHC Junglika to Community Health Centre. Now the news in detail. Nagaland British Congress Committee, NPCC, today said it is alarmed to observe the extent and the rate at which dengue is spreading in Mon District. In a release, NPCC Communication Department lamented that the medical department was caught so grossly underprepared and underempowered to tackle the onslaught of the outbreak, thereby jeopardizing the timely dispensation of critical medical interventions. NPCC said that this is another clear cut case of utter governance deficit of the current state government. While condemning the abject failure of the state government, leading to so much avoidable suffering and loss of lives, NPCC affirmed its stand in solidarity with the people of Mon at this difficult and unfortunate times. It also urged the government of the day to step up efforts to ensure that a relevant department is armed with the necessary tools to effectively combat the outbreak and prevent the loss of precious lives, at least from now on. Meanwhile, NPCC appreciated the humanitarianism extended by the Cognac Baptist Church's Council, which has made it possible for the people of Mon to avail a set of much-needed medical services free of cost. A meeting with prominent figures in palliative care, including palliative care nurse and director of Cancer Relief India, Kili Byrne, and regional facilitator for Northeast and East overseeing palliative care programs Rontu Sangma was held in Kohima yesterday. The meeting proposed to initiate a pilot palliative care project in Kohima and Dimapu in collaboration with Baliam India with a aim to enhance the quality of palliative care services in these regions. Gilly Byrne said palliative care nursing and education can potentially lead to improvements in the curriculum and training of nursing students. The meeting took place with the officials of Department of Health and Family Welfare, including Commissioner Secretary V. Gezo and Principal Director Dr. Rita Tour. With the migratory bird Amur falcon starting to arrive in Nagalin, the Divisional Forest Officer Mugukchung Forest Division today said that this magnificent bird is a long-distance trans-equatorial migrant travelling up to 22,000 kilometres in a year from Eastern Asia all the way to South Africa and back in early autumn. The DFO said that in Nagaland they gather in huge flocks for up to three to four weeks to feed and rest before continuing the journey, maintaining that the migratory birds play an important role in the ecosystem, acting as natural regulators of pest population, pollination, etc. The DFO said the efforts made by the state government and public have been helping to provide a safe passage to this bird over the years earning Nagaland State, the Sopriki Amur Falcon, capital of the world. Moreover, it has been accorded legal protection under Wildlife Protection Act 1972, the DFO said, adding that according to the Act, Amur Falcon is a protected species listed in Schedule 4 of the law. Hunting of these birds or having their meat in possession is a criminal offence, punishable up to three years imprisonment under the Act, the DFO said, while appealing to all the citizens of Moguchung District to refrain from hunting of Amuru falcons and to provide a safe stay and passage to the state guests. Zeminu District Planning and Development Board, DPDP, today unanimously recommended upgradation of primary health centre, Chunglika, to Community Health Centre. It was done acknowledging the healthcare needs of the district. The meeting chaired by MLA Joenka Seb as the chairman was held at DC Conference Hall. It also recommended the proposal submitted by Rengma Hoho for allocation of land to construct a civil society organisation central building complex in Zeminu Town. 
DPDP Zeminu also decided to recommend the registration of Zeminu District Chess Association as a society. This news comes to you from Akashvani, Kohima. You can also listen to this news bulletin live on News on Air app and YouTube channels AIA News Kohima and Akashvani Kohima program. Ministry of Consumer Affairs has launched a dark buttons buster hackathon 2023 to provide easy solutions to consumers to bust unfair practices adopted by e-commerce platforms. Secretary Consumer Affairs Rohit Kumar Singh and Special Secretary Niti Kare jointly launched this hackathon in New Delhi. Dark buttons have been defined as any practices or deceptive design of buttons using a user interface on any platform designed to mislead or trick users into doing something they originally did not intend or want to do so. Talking to Akashvani News, Special Secretary Niti Kare said that the ministry is working with the technical institutions at several stages and IT professionals are invited to participate in this hackathon. In a move towards increasing voter participation during the elections, the Election Commission of India today joined hands with renowned actor Rajkumar Rao. The Commission recognised Rajkumar Rao as a national icon to create awareness among the voters, especially the youth. An MOU was exchanged between Rajkumar Rao and the ECI at Rang Pawan in New Delhi in the presence of Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar and other senior officials of ECI. Addressing the occasion, Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar said the Election Commission is set to start a special drive from tomorrow to update the details in the electoral rolls except in the five poll pound states of Rajasthan, Telangana, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Mizoram. He said the Commission is also planning to join hands with the Education Ministry to ingrain to the young people with the electoral pr- process. Army Chief General Manoj Pandey has said the Indian Army is focusing to reduce import dependency to the least and becoming self-reliant. Speaking at Chanakya Defence Dialogue Curtain Razor event in New Delhi, General Pandey said that the Army has dealt with the internal security challenges in a manner expected from this force. He said the Army is making good progress on this front. General Bande said that the border situation remains stable and there is a need to remain proactive to deal with various security challenges. He informed that the first batch of 40,000 Agnivirs recruited under the Agnipak scheme has joined the army and feedback from the ground level of the units is encouraging. Union External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jai Shankar has said that the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO, should work together to promote stability and prosperity in the region by strictly adhering to principles of international law and respecting sovereignty and territorial integrity of each other. Addressing the 22nd session of the Council of Heads of Government of SCO at Bishkek. Today, Dr. Jai Shankar said India is keen to partner with the member states for sustainable, mutually beneficial and financially viable solutions. He said India is among the top 10 exporters in the world by value. Dr. Jai Shankar said its total trade with SCO members has shown robust growth, especially with Russia. In pursuance to the Urban Development Letter, Deputy Commissioner Guhima has convened a meeting of District Task Force to deliberate on complete ban on single-use plastic. It will be held on 31st October at 2 p.m. at DC Conference Hall, Guhima. And now to the news, here are the main points again. Nagaland Pradesh Congress Committee decries high rate of dengue in Moon District. Meeting proposes initiation of pilot palliative care projects in Kohima and Dimapu in collaboration with Baliam India. Divisional Forest Officer Mukukchung appeals people to protect migratory bird Amur Falcon. And Zeminu District Planning and Development Board recommends upgradation of PHC Junglika to Community Health Centre. That is all we have in this evening news bulletin. Good night.